Again, we're in further clarification videos on points I think that have been overlooked, uh, things that uh, we would hope you had listened and heard, but sometimes it's just unfortunately uh, the nature of things that sometimes there's distractions, sometimes when we're watching a video, sometimes there's even distractions while I'm making the video. So we want people to be uh, clear on a couple, a couple points. One being, uh, let's just deal with the word license and get this over with. Uh, there's a movement out there that says they're not gonna have a license, but for what purpose are they not gonna have this license? Now, if we're talking about the sovereignty groups, um, they're claiming they have uh, the right to travel. And I'm not going to dispute the fact that anybody has the right to travel. The concern coming down is, in Caesar's world, if you are basically identifying yourself in something by voluntary consent, uh, especially in contract, adhesive contracts, which no one put a gun to anybody's head on, and you're using something in that contract that belongs to somebody else, you need a license to use that. It's very simple. If you watch a movie, it'll say that this movie uh, can only be uh, basically uh, shown uh, in public forums uh, for money purposes only by right of license, that the, li that the film itself is licensed to distributors to distribute. Well, what is that about? Well, it means it's dealing with property. And if you have the property of another, you require a license for it. Now, Caesar is not telling you that he requires your property. He's saying if you want to use his property, you've got to guarantor that because he has to hold you liable for the use of his property. So now when we go down this deep, dark rabbit hole of commerce and start saying, oh, those private bankers, those guys that are just using everybody. Well, you can't use somebody without their voluntary consent because that would be slavery. We don't have that. And we'd also be calling that a monopoly too if something was going on that you had to do something or else. That would be a monopoly. That's not the case. Everything that we've done, we've done by our own voluntary ignorance and consent. But you can't have something that belongs to another, claim it, and then not pay for it. It's dishonorable. It's ridiculous to think you could do that. Uh, and it'd be an anarchist thought to utilize something in the public that belongs to the state and whether the state has a debt on that in some manner or an enforcement obligation to use that and then say, oh, I'm going to use that, but I'm not going to pay for it. If you are involved with the common aggregate, there are obligations of things you can do in that common aggregate and what you'll have to pay for by utilizing that common aggregate property. And therefore, it would require your consent and your assuring it to use it. That's why your given name is placed in. But you've extinguished out your exclusive individual right as it stood before that when you join it to something else because how could that work otherwise? How could you take what is yours and not collateralize it to give the party whose property you're using some type of edge of authority to enforce against it. So you're identified with the two names together because you're using the property of another. So the only way they can individually identify you in the aggregate is with your given name. But your given name is no longer a Christian name when it's attached to something that's pagan. When it's attached to something that's secular, which means godless, not spiritual, don't confuse that the state has to do something for you because you're individualizing the use of something. The state has the right to operate its own secular government. Canada, the United States, I don't care where you are right now, Australia, has the right to be a secular government. God has not denied them the right to be a pagan and to be involved in commerce. 
and that being the focus. So what people are being confused of or confused in is they're thinking somehow that their government was non-Gentile. That the United States was a nation under God. That is an impossibility. If that is a world power, that has nothing to do with God. It just means God is allowing them for the time being, just as he feeds the righteous and the unrighteous, they have the right to exist. And they have the right to carry on their own damnation and their own wars and everything else they wish to do for the time being until God's time allots the closure of that. And we do not have the right as a Christian, if you're watching this from a Christian perspective, to bear arms against the government, to protest against them. You have no right to protest whatsoever. Why would you protest against something that you're supposed to be separate from? And if you are to be subject to the higher powers according to Romans 13, then you would make sure that the property that belongs to the state is the state's property or the government's property. The only thing you have an inalienable right to do is remove yourself from what is yours from what you have placed in collateral to use of another's property. But you can't take theirs or hold theirs and not pay for it. Now, at this stage, I do understand why the government has taken such a direct movement on these groups that are preaching this idea and even mixing some of the Bible into it somehow to support their right to bear arms as a Christian, which would make no sense because Christ never bared arms against the state or Caesar, to claim use the state property and not pay it. He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar. So if you're using Caesar's money, then it's Caesar's. Understand that everything you bought with it is Caesar's. Caesar's officials signed those notes. Caesar's bankers that they're in business with may have signed those notes. They have eminent domain over what is theirs. That is the rule, and that is the way it is played. You cannot play in someone else's game and then tell them the rules. And you must eat humble pie and get to the reality that you will not own property in Caesar's world by claim of right to something that belongs to Caesar. He's just allowing you to have it. But you must pay the debt, the duty, the obligation that may be attached to the use of it. And if all the people you associate with in this aggregate are not honest, you also bear the burden of coming down and crashing as a titanic ship into an iceberg of debt that is about to happen. So you take this risk because you're in with a common usage. That's like a common share. So if you use what is public in common, you pay your share. And they hold you in your individual inalienable position responsible for it. And therefore you become alienable because of the fact that you've placed yourself up in there as surety for another. Because there is no way to surety a fiction other with putting truth in there to do it. So you take your truthful real name and you place it as security in exchange to use the property of another. You have possibly been misled by the free monkey on the land movement. Prime rates for primates. They're misleading you with information because they dove into the middle of information without doing due diligence and proper research. This video should have clarified enough information for you to revamp your mainframe computer up here to realize that there is no basis in law for what those movements are doing. They're wrong, they're erroneous, and they are terrorists. And God will allow the evil of terror to come against them because scripture says it will happen. So if you are using something that's taxable, which is the common interest, which is the common name, which is how it's tracked, 
You must return that tax because you don't have assurance anymore because you're now walking in insurance, which is a risk because you're using the property of another and therefore the only way they can run that in a fiction is to come up with a different plan, which is a gambled mathematical equation to figure out how much you could possibly cost them moving around something that really doesn't belong to you. So the law can be almost like a lottery because they don't know what you're going to do with that lot that you're moving around that you think is yours, but it isn't. So you can't be on the spiritual side and be attached to the other because your religion does it right now. Because your religion uses the common interest. They tell people who even register charities that are religious. If it affects the common or the public interest, you will have to give up your taxable charitable exemption. That means you'd have to give them back your property that you have under the charity because you're using state property and it's their right to let the regulations that subsidize what you do, owning it as state property because you're using state taxes to offset the idea of having that property or giving even tax uh, deductions to people or tax receipts. So therefore, do not confuse yourself as a spiritual religion and think that you're being on and above board following Caesar's regulations in a spiritual sense. What you're doing is you're running a state-run religion and they have the right to enforce you. Because you are not separate. A Christian true faith would just be asking for favor. Because it's doing the good thing and it's not touching what is wrong. It has full assurance of what it's doing and it has to walk with that faith. It has to walk with what is good because that is goodwill on one side. There is bad will on the other side. Because the will of man is bad, which reflects to Satan, or reflects to man's governments, which has nothing to do with God. God is just allowing the time for them to exist to prove the point they cannot rule themselves. Man cannot fix his problems. Man cannot rule over himself. Only God can. And Christians are not to be involved in anything political. There's a Latin maxim that even states that a spiritual man cannot be involved in secular matters. They're clear in their laws, they're clear in their jurisdictions, but you must give up all your civil rights in order to get out. So if you have property that belongs to them and you think you can still keep it and play the same game and not pay, you're misleading yourself. Because you're into the world of ego. Galatians 6 clearly states, If a man thinks he is something, when he is no thing, he deceiveth his mind. Because if you believe that you are a something when you're really a no thing, you're in the world of the illusion and the fiction. We'll leave this video at that level. We'll go on to the next. We have a couple good points coming up in the next videos. They'll be short, clear, concise, and we hope you take the time to take notes and do your own research further on it.